Hi. So today I am going to be trying out this 80 pence hair gel and seeing if it will work as a curl gel. <laughs> so this obviously was cheap as chips. It was literally 80p from Wilco here in the UK. And as you can see, you get quite a lot of it. There's not a whole big list of ingredients. I will talk more about the ingredients at the end of the video. So for those of you who don't know, I went on a strict curly girl method for around eight months and I quit a couple of months ago. My reasonings for quitting are all in my curly girl method journey. Actually, in the last video, which I'll leave up here, I explain if you're interested in learning more about hair care and the curly girl method, please do subscribe. I have a ton of hair videos. Since quitting, I do still do the curly girl method sometimes so I do kind of like to have a gel on hand but only like once a week maybe once every two weeks to give my hair a break from blow drying my hair does not look good when air dried I have a very frizzy dry hair type which looks horrendous when just left to air dry I should also make it very clear that this is not heat damaged hair this is not bleach or dye damage I have gone to tremendous efforts for many 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 years to take the best care of my hair as I possibly can and to go as natural as possible and unfortunately this is just the way my hair is. So I'm going to go wash my hair, apply this gel and then we're going to see what it looks like and I'm also going to show you what it looks like on the second day, so second day curls, so make sure you keep watching throughout the video to see the results. I have just got out of the shower, my hair is soaking wet, it's still dripping. I'm going to split my hair in two. I did of course detangle before. I washed my hair, but I'm just gonna gently finger detangle. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna take... It doesn't smell particularly good. It kind of smells like shaving foam, if I'm honest. Since we've got loads of this, I may as well be generous with it. Um, oh, maybe that's a bit much. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm, now I'm doubting myself. I don't want to put like way too much in. Okay, that much on my fingers for one half of my hair. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, I feel like this is a lot. I might just actually spread this between both sides of my hair to start off with. It's very thick. It's thicker than my other gels that I've used. So I've run it through my hair. It actually feels like quite a lot is in there. So now I'm gonna scrunch. It's really wet, so there's a lot of water still in there. I'm gonna add the same again, but just a little bit less. Now I'm just taking a t-shirt and gently blotting out the water while scrunching. Otherwise it will just take forever to dry. And this also helps get out any extra gel that is maybe a bit too much. I'm now going to diffuse one half of my hair and I'm gonna let the other half air dry completely naturally, if I can. I'm going to diffuse on a warm heat. Okay, I'm back. Slight change of plan. It will be getting dark in like two hours and my hair was still wet. I knew that it would not dry in time to film this video. So I've decided to kind of dif half diffuse it and half air dry it. So um, this side was pretty much all diffused and then this side was air dried 30% and then I ended up diffusing it just to get it dry because I'm now going to scrunch it. Ordinarily, when you have dried your hair with gel, you get a gel cast. Funnily enough, I have no gel cast at all. I really, really thought I'd have like a lot of gel cast considering this is like extra whole hair gel <laughs> and I used quite a lot of it. But considering I've used so much of it, it's dried. I can't even feel a thing. It doesn't, almost doesn't feel like I've got gel in there. It's kind of got a slight cast, but barely anything to scrunch out really. I don't know if maybe through diffusing it ended up scrunching it out, but... I'm just gonna give it a quick scrunch. So this is my hair. I'm quite surprised. It's really not that bad. It's a little messier than it would be with maybe like a higher quality gel that would really give like a cast, but like, <laughs> It's not too bad, like I've got, my waves are there. My fringe has kind of gone crazy. Let's have a look from the back. There's kind of quite a bit of frizz on the side. So what I'm gonna do to finish it off is use just a little bit of bog standard serum. Lightly go 
over the ends at the back is like my problem area and then I'm gonna scrunch it dust it over like the top to get Ooh. for an ATP gel this is not bad I am gonna see as I always do what it looks like tomorrow to see how well the curls kind of hold up overnight because second day curls can be like a hit or miss good morning i'm back and uh we're gonna take out my hair so i did heatlessly style my front hair just to try and give some volume to my bangs which has kind of worked um i just put them in a roller overnight but it's kind of made them a little bit crazy but anyway so i've slept with the curly girl method pineapple which i usually do if i'm wearing my natural waves so <laughs> it's crazy my hair's always crazy in the morning to be honest but look there's still some some wave in there I can see some definition I feel like it's very blue in here I have a look at the back straight up like this is what it looks like I've just looked in a mirror it's a bit messy but <laughs> that's just my hair <laughs> I'm now gonna refresh my hair which is where we spray it with water and we re-scrunch it which reactivates the gel and helps just define. I feel like I have to say this every time I do it because there's always going to be people watching who maybe are not too familiar with the curly girl method. But I have a whole series on my channel so you can go learn all about it if you want. Okay so I'll be back once it's dry. Okay my hair has pretty much dried now. This is the result of day two with the ATP gel. So did it work as a curl gel? Yes, it did actually work as a curl gel. It has brought out my waves. I actually think I could have got away with using a lot more than I did to get more of a gel cast that might have given me a more defined look. It kind of doesn't feel like there's anything in my hair considering I feel like I put a lot of this in. It literally feels pretty light and weightless and like there's nothing in there. So that was surprising. Is it amazing? Not really. Uh, I don't feel like my hair looks amazingly beautiful or like I'm getting amazingly gorgeous waves. It's a little bit dull. Not a whole lot of shine to my hair. It's fairly soft but I think that's just a result of the conditioner. Probably can't really tell so much on camera but it is quite frizzy. It also says it has pro vitamin B5 in it. Not a big fan on the smell. I was looking up these, some of these ingredients and some of the ingredients are actually used in shaving foam so that's maybe why it smells like shaving foam. It's obviously not going to be the best thing to use on your hair in terms of ingredients. I will leave a resource for a list of ingredients that I've used in the description. Don't take my word for it solely because I'm just putting my own opinion on it. But um, do your own research. So aqua, so it's mostly water and PVP. Carboma is a thickening agent. PEG 40 hydronated castor oil. Hydronated castor oil apparently is adding natural hydrogen gas under pressure to oils which solidifies them. So it's like a solidified castor oil. Parfum, perfume. Trisodium HEDTA, which is another preservative. Penthanol is where the vitamin B complex comes in. It's also a humectant, so it absorbs water. Sodium hydroxide. It's an alkali and emulsifier used in cleaners, shampoos, soaps. Um, I think it's used quite a lot, but there's literally such a small amount of that in here. DMT hydantoin. Another preservative. The main ingredient in here that I'm not too fond of is the trethanolamine. Probably pronouncing that incorrectly, um, but these are said to be pretty drying um, and have a lot of alcohols in them, just from what I've read. But apparently this doesn't make much of an effect if it's used in small quantities, but considering this is the third ingredient on this list means that there's a larger amount of it used. And because my hair is pretty dry naturally, it's probably not the best thing to use on my hair. There's obviously a reason it's used. I just wanted to quickly show you a comparison of some of the ingredients. This is a more expensive gel and this is just aloe vera gel. There is no ingredients in common with the aloe vera gel and this gel. However, for the more expensive gel, the only ingredient they have in common is the PEG40 hydronated castor oil. Other than 
that, all the ingredients are completely different, which I find really unusual since they're both a hair gel. Also, interestingly, this mousse that I got, you may have seen my video trying this as well. This also has PEG4 dehydrogenated castor oil and PVP, but nothing else in common. Oh, and fragrance, they both have in common, but... I don't know if that really counts. Yeah, probably. I'm still learning about ingredients myself, but I just thought that was quite interesting and I thought I would add that in. I probably won't use this a whole lot, but it's a really good alternative if you need a really cheap hair gel and you get loads of it. But I will keep this in case I wanna do like some crazy hairstyles or if I wanna experiment a little bit more with gel. So that was fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos of this kind of nature, please subscribe. I do lots of videos trying out things on my hair. I have a whole curly girl method series, a whole hair care series. I do a lot of hair stuff, but I also do other stuff too. I'm trying to grow my Instagram page, so go give that a follow as well if you want. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.